Hey everyone, welcome to week 11, day three. And uh, for this week, the theme is inside, outside, interior, exterior. And we've tried to find ways to solve that, to define that, to redefine that. Uh, so first day was kind of poetic. We did uh, Danny's portrait kind of coming into light and light sort of signifying the outside world, you know, world where sunlight is our light source. And a uh, little bit of reflection in her eyes just spoke about that exterior world, that blue of the sky in, in her pupils. Uh, and yesterday we went on a very, very kind of simple, I thought um, it was very nice, a very quiet painting. Uh, but I, you know, walking around the apartment all these days, I've been trying to think about where the notion of outside world lies, you know, inside. And uh, I saw a little bit of reflection in our kitchen of, you know, the outside world of sun hitting the outside world uh, through our window. And I thought it was it was very, very nice. So it's a very quiet painting, but I thought it was it was very cool. Sometimes we don't need to be like super descriptive about that and we can be a little bit more abstract. So uh, we'll see what we're going to do today. OK, thank you. OK, let's get started. Uh, for today's painting, I thought I would alter my gaze maybe a little bit. And I figure I would do that because instinctively, I think I am looking towards space to try and solve this idea of inside and outside. But uh, I was very happy that I gave myself the chance to do a portrait on Monday. So I saw an alternative to space and I understood the humanity behind the inhabiting of space that could be exemplified by the look in, in Danny's portrait. So I thought I would return to the body because yesterday, and I think yesterday's painting was super, super important for me because it was in many ways an approach to painting the space that we're currently held up in, but it was also very in many ways, very mournful. I think there was a distance to it. And I was explaining yesterday, particularly for the people that don't speak Spanish, but I was explaining yesterday that I think the idea, the definition of inside, outside, interior, exterior is currently at a very fragile state. And I wanted to see if I could paint something that could evoke that fragility, that ephemeral quality. And I saw a very dim, just a little ray of hope uh, reflecting indirectly. This was a sunset that reflected indirectly. It was actually bouncing off the building, the facade of the building that's in front of us. And I just caught like a tiny glimpse of it in our cupboard. And I thought, this is fantastic. This is amazing. This is just a little hint, a little clue of what's going on outside. But it's not. I mean, it's not in your face. It's not saturated. It's just there. It's like a like a very low hum. And the risk was trying to paint something that was overly descriptive. I I myself, and you'll see this in today's painting, I am fascinated by by detail, by the particular quality of detail. And many times I find in detail the way, the manner in which I communicate. Uh, the specificity of my subject matter, of of the person that is behind the painting. In this case, Danny. These are going to be Danny's feet. But I thought vagueness was very, very important yesterday. And vagueness, I wasn't trying to make it like a like an artifact, like a weird thing that I'm imposing into a painting. It was just that time of day, which is probably around this time of the year, it's probably around 5.30ish here in, in Bogota. And it was just this dim light then being hit by the tiniest, tiniest hint of saturation. And I didn't want to do more. Sometimes we have such an urge to do more, 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 and to just squeeze the life out of a painting. And I thought this painting was was just very subtle and very sort of still, and which goes against the nature of this moment of time because I felt, well, that's 
that's not going to be there for for another minute. <laughs> I was saying yesterday how that light just changes dramatically uh, moment to moment, even like, you know, breath uh, through breath, it just changes. It's it's such a uh, it's such an overwhelming quality of light, particularly in these in, in those hours uh, that uh, that I just found it beautiful. So to me, it was it was very nice to to see the confrontation that I could get in that portrait on on Monday, which was very direct. It had really nice saturation. It had coolness, warmness. It had form. It was descriptive. And then I thought I would couple that with just something that was very, very quiet and very solemn in a way, I thought. And I was very, very happy that I gave myself the chance to do that because I usually don't. I usually just try to, even if if I don't want to, I think the ego part of us as painters is always trying to showcase how well we can paint constantly and how our last painting is going to be our greatest painting. And if we couple that with like social media where where there is an expectation of people being wowed constantly, then that can deform our intention and that can blind us into not being able to recognize the real inherent value of painting for a few hours every day. So today, like I said, I thought I would go back to the body. And I thought, well, within the inside, which is our apartment, within this idea of inside, we can also understand inside and outside. And when I think of Danny, she's one of the hardest working people I know, so please don't misinterpret what I'm about to say, but she loves to sleep. That is the one thing I think she adores most in life. And um, I usually hog all the uh, covers. I take all the covers when we sleep because I turn like crazy. I am like a wild animal. And as I turn, I'm like a pig in a blanket. So... It's always very funny because I wake up super early. I've always woken up like that. I, ever since I was a kid, this isn't even anything that has to do with being a parent. And when I wake up, there's usually some part of her body that's like sticking out of the covers. And I saw, I remember seeing her feet and I thought, this is wonderful. This is a very kind of warm, funny, close way of saying, yeah, there is an outside world, but in our apartment, in this place we inhabit, within these walls, within these walls within walls, there are particular places, and in this case, the bed, where we can find an incredible amount of comfort. So as soon as I saw those two little feet sticking out, I was like, yes, I'm going to do this. You know, this is perfect for this theme because I don't want to be always looking out. I don't want to believe that the outer world is that which is just presenting itself past my window, past my door, where there's fresh air or, you know, where the sun is hitting my face. I want to see if, if there are other ways to try and understand. So I saw these two feet and they were perfect. They looked like a sculpture, particularly the, uh, the way the fingers of the right foot were actually describing the left foot because they were conforming to the, the left foot, to how the left foot turns in space. I just absolutely love that. I thought that was magical. And it's nothing. It's like a nothing detail. Because if you think about it, that's just how our body works. Every single moment of our body, once it comes in contact with another form, it just has to conform. It has to bend. It has to kind of shift and find how to sit on top of whatever form is underneath it. I just thought it was magic. I, I know I maybe overused that word, but I just... I really do feel like I'm in awe of those little moments. And I think that's so important when you paint because if you're not, if when you're looking at the world, at nature, or at very little details that present themselves to you, and all you see is stuff that is inconsequential, that is unworthy, and not unworthy of painting, like I've said it before, painting doesn't do anything. Painting doesn't elevate anything. Painting doesn't validate. Painting is just an act that produces a painting. That's about it. Let's not convince ourselves that because we paint something, then there is worth to whatever we painted. I really feel that if you're not in awe, in perfect awe of what you're looking at, if you don't find absolute 
entire fascination when you look at something, then there's no way you can paint it. There is no way. I mean, you can formally paint it. I'm sure you could mix colors and people could teach you how to draw and people can teach you how to understand form and how to interpret it through paint. But to really paint it, to be able to communicate why this thing that you're looking at, this moment in nature, has moved you, I don't think it's possible. I, I really don't. If you don't feel anything, there's no point. So when I saw these two feet, I was just... Ugh. I was mesmerized. And it's almost impossible not to reference probably one of the most beautiful, beautiful paintings in history. The Menzel foot is probably one of my biggest influences, uh, I think, certainly in my early career, but it's always there. It's just, it's this voice in my head that will never go away. And to be honest, I don't want it to go away. There is such a thing as transcending your teachers and transcending those paintings you admire. It's important to understand why those paintings are relevant to us and then to put them aside. Uh, I don't know. I just, I, I find so much beauty in that Menzel foot that I just can't, I just can't leave it behind. It's just, I don't know. It is so absolutely precious to me that if it's going to affect me my whole life, so be it. This is my choice. And to be honest, I didn't plan this. A lot of people think that I was being referential when I did my dad's uh, first big painting where his bare legs are sticking out of his robe and, you know, he's got these two chunky feet sticking out. There's a ton of people that have told me that's your masterpiece. That was your painting. You're never going to be able to do anything better than that, which is dumb. <laughs> I painted that years ago. And if I had believed that, then why do anything anymore? I feel that that was a testament of one moment in my life, and that's about it. I've told the story before, but this was absolute serendipity. I mean, my dad just for a second took that pose, and I was in the computer, and I just had a camera right next to me. And my dad would have never posed like this. I could have never convinced him of posing like this. My dad was like a scientist. He was the image he portrayed of himself could not be farther from the one that I, I had painted. And when I exhibited this painting, he was like, who is going to want to see me like that? What are you crazy? He found this to be very offensive in many, many ways. His pride was just really, really struck. And what I did was when I saw him like that, I took this camera, this very crappy old digital camera, the one that you had to press the shutter and it wouldn't really take the shot. It would never. It would just beep like 10 times before taking the shot. So I was like, this is never going to take the shot. And I looked at him. I grabbed the camera and in one motion, I'm not exaggerating, I turned around and I pointed it at him, but I didn't even see. I didn't even check my composition. I didn't even see anything. And the camera went like beep, beep, and it shot the, the photo. It was insane. I was like, this is the fastest this dumb little camera has ever <laughs> shot a photograph. And I didn't even look at the photo at that moment in time because I was sure that my dad had immediately moved. And I was like, this camera is crappy, so it's probably going to be super blurry. It's lost. So I, I didn't even look at the photo immediately. Like I put the camera to the side and I was like, ah, you know, whatever. And eventually I saw it and I was like, this perfect shot, this absolutely perfect shot that begged to be painted. And I only painted this painting maybe three years after I shot that photo. I had actually made a print, a letter-sized print of it with a crappy printer that we had at home. And I kept it. I just kept it in a folder. And I was like, oh, someday I'll paint it. Someday I'll paint it. And I eventually painted it. But a lot of people think that's actually meant to reference Menzel's foot. And it really wasn't. I mean, I knew that painting, of course. But it was just, it was more about my dad. You know, my dad just happened to have amazing feet and he would have never posed for me like that. So those feet were just lost. <laughs> they were completely lost as subject matter, as amazing subject matter. Now, since then, I've painted my feet, I think maybe three times. Yeah, maybe. And I love them. I just I, I don't I mean, I don't love my feet. I love to paint feet. I just think they have as much character as, as hands. The thing is, we don't get to see them as much and we don't gesticulate, you know, with our feet like we do with our hands. But they have character. Oh, my God. They are absolutely charged with character. 
and Danny's feet do that. They are absolutely awesome. All her toes are awesome. The way they turn are fantastic. So in many ways, I wanted to do a very planar painting. And by planar, I mean, I was, I was trying to emphasize all the shifts and turns in space of those little toes. And there is a moment in the painting that I get a little lost, I feel, because I was way too concentrated in just putting little blocks of color. And I think I forgot that I was painting toes, which is not bad, really. Honestly, it's best when we don't nominate the things we paint, when we just paint almost abstractly. But at a certain point, I was like, oh, I'm losing the character of, of these feet, which meant that I had to check my drawing a lot and just make tiny, tiny little shifts. But eventually, I found it again. I think a painting, almost every single painting we do is always like that. It's, it's just us kind of veering away from the path and then finding our way back again. And this painting was a little bit of that. I felt a little kind of pressure to just find my way because at times I was like, oh, I'm losing it, I'm losing it, I'm losing it. And then eventually, for some reason, I have this blind faith that if I know what I'm doing, I'll eventually get to the right path again. And I think I went through about an hour, maybe a little over an hour in this painting where I was like, oh my God, I'm lost. But I I have to trust that what I'm doing is the right path and eventually I'll I'll hit my stride again. And that's what happened and I'm super, super happy. And when speaking about constructing a painting in this manner, I mean, I'll never be able to do it as well as he did, but Uglo is just unavoidable. I mean, I was speaking about how Menzel is somebody who I just can't, get out of my head. I mean, the impact of Uglo in contemporary painting, my God. In a couple of years, maybe we'll see how deep, how really, really deep his impact has been. Because for us, it was easy to say, well, the three big names uh, were Auerbach, Bacon, and Freud. But honestly, Uglo is right up there with all of them. I mean, the, he's as much of a master as any of those three guys. And to me, I have to come to terms with a lot of, of his painting because I love the way he perceives things. But I think what accompanies the act of perception, that almost absurd position that's behind his paintings, I just can't. I, I can't deal with that. I mean, he sometimes would say that he would take five, seven years to do a painting. He would have uh, models posing for two years in these very awkward poses. And if they weren't exactly the same, if the pose was not exactly the same, then he would feel it was just not worth it. Why paint it? And I know that painting from life can kind of lead to that, but I think objectifying a model to that degree is just not worth it. I really feel that's that's the point where I'm like, no, no. If you're painting a, a vase, you know, yeah, just tell the vase to stay still. I'm sure that the vase will be able to hold still. But you don't tell a model, you don't tell a human being to stay still when it goes against everything in our human nature to stay still. It just doesn't make sense. I really believe that to have a connection with what we're painting, we don't need, we don't need a lot. We really don't. It's like having a conversation. Sometimes you can, you know, meet up with a good friend and you can talk for 10 minutes and you know, have a smile for the rest of the day. And that's how it works. With painting, it's the same thing. You could paint for an hour a day. And if it's a good hour, it's like, wow, this was incredible. This was absolutely incredible. I don't need to subject anyone to posing for eight hours a day, four days a week. That's too much. That's way too much. So I was very happy with how this painting ended up today. And I think... I was also happy that I gave myself the chance, and I always kind of phrase it in this way, that I gave myself the chance to, um, to do something different, to say, okay, the most natural way of approaching this, this problem is to resolve it through space. And I'm, I'm, I'm not against doing it through space. I'm for sure going to find a way to speak about our apartment as a space. But today, I wanted to go back to the body and to a moment of the body and to feel a little more intimate and just fun and to, in a way, fight to uh, win back some of that warmth. I wanted to tell nature, okay, that warmth that you've been <laughs> denying us, 
I want to take it back. I want to take it back a little bit in my own way. And I want to have a smile on my face as soon as I finish this painting. So it was very, very simple painting, but I, I loved every minute of it. So that was it for today. I hope all of you guys are doing well. Danny and I send you guys our best. Huge uh, virtual hugs to everyone out there. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for our uh, penultimate. I was going to say our last day, but no, no, no. We still have Thursday and Friday to go. So our penultimate day in this week uh, where we continue to try and figure out how to define and redefine the ideas of inside, outside, interior, exterior. So thank you. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.